Good morning. <laughs> Coffee time. Today we're going to be talking about a couple things. One, I unboxed or opened up my uh, copy of Metroid Prime Remaster, which I haven't used or played yet. And uh, I streamed that last night because, like, you know what? I might as well try out this game uh, because I was, you know, talking about it. And it was actually pretty interesting. I remember when I was younger, I couldn't afford uh, a GameCube. I had Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. I had handhelds because those were a little bit more affordable um, in some ways. And I just, but as far as the GameCube was concerned, I didn't own one. Not until much later. And so we had a buddy who was very, very wealthy. And by we, I mean my group of friends. We go over to his house and play video games and really ended up just be, be like watching him play video games. This dude, I believe was an only child. My memory escapes me. Again, I was like 15 and uh, he had two bedrooms. One bedroom was all of his toys and the other was like a master suite that there was like six dudes, a hammock. It was huge. And he would do his like physics homework while we would play video games. It was wild and he had cable in his room and that was like a big deal back then to have cable in your room but i remember when metroid prime came out because he was the one who got the game because none of us had gamecube and i didn't quite understand the game oh also we'll be talking about these guys today too this is the nixie or Nix. i don't know how to say it wizard and then this is the doyoki GameCube style controller, and we'll, we'll chat about those because I was using one of them, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, we would just go over to his house and get to play anything because he had two TVs in his room. Who has two TVs in their room? I barely had one. I did have one because for my bar mitzvah, I got bar mitzvah money and I was able to purchase one, which was awesome, but it was a 12 inch CRT TV, which to this day, I wish I had because they're worth so much money now. Um, oh, oh, Rogue Bean. Let me get it. Make sure it's a bean and not a, yeah, it's a bean. Uh, today's coffee is uh, not one I would usually get, but this is Golden Gaio from Novo. It's a, uh, it's a Sumatra. Usually Sumatras aren't really what I drink because they are, I don't know, not really that interesting, but hey, let's give it a try today and see how it goes. I've had it before, but I had it with milk, and so I don't know. So we're going to do 25 grams exactly, and uh, we'll vacuum seal this back up and talk back about GameCube. And so we would go over to his house, we'd play these video games and stay up all night, uh, usually all weekend, because he would have these pizza parties, which it was just me and him and like four of my other buddies, because we were just a group of friends. And he went on to be an engineer at Porsche. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> One buddy is a mechanic, and then I'm uh, talking about video games on the internet. And so when it came to Prime Remaster, or, the, or Metroid Prime, rather, uh, I never, I never played it because I wasn't particularly interested in first-person shooters. And this was at a time where the only games I really played were like RPGs, JRPGs, Pokemon, and those times. I never got into the Metroid series. I didn't play Metroid Fusion on Game Boy Advance. I didn't play any Metroid game. And also, I don't know when Fusion came out. If it came out before Prime or after Prime, whatever it may be. I didn't play any of those games. And so when I first saw it, I, I was pretty amazed because this was around the same time that PlayStation 2 and Xbox and all that stuff was a thing. And I remember seeing Halo and being like, holy smokes, Halo, this is crazy. And again, my memory isn't perfect when it comes to this stuff. This, this, they could have come out, come out at like different times. But with Metroid Prime specifically, it was... It's pretty impressive. I mean, I'm like, dude, this is on a GameCube. I'm used to Nintendo games being like Mario 64 or Ocarina of Time. Not this like really, really dark and twisted, crazy, interesting first person shooter, right? And so I, uh, ooh, ooh, this actually smells pretty good. I, again, never played it. And I proceeded to watch my buddy. Oh, it does smell like a Sumatra. 
my buddy Chad play this game and uh, kind of it just went to the wind. So finally, I when it re the remaster came out, everyone was talking about it and me and my FOMO self being like, I'm not going to miss out on this opportunity to play a game that everyone's talking about. I purchased it and then never used it. And so we cracked it open yesterday. Open. It's in my Switch right now, and I proceeded to play it for about an hour and a half last night on stream. And to my surprise, it was not actually at all what I thought it was going to be. Because, you know, when it comes to Metroid games in general, or Metroidvania, or whatever the genre is, I feel like the game is deceptive. It's like, it's pretty small. At least that's the way it seems. It's a small game that you can only access by doing different things, right? So like you go halfway through a room, but you can't access it because you don't have the ability to get small enough to make it into the room all the way. And so you have to leave and go to another room and go halfway through the room. I missed a spot. And then you come back and then you can finally finish the room. So it's like the game isn't huge. It's just uh, like basically going back and forth the whole time, which for some people, they're really into it. I know that my buddy Nathaniel is really into Metroidvania style games, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But me personally, not really my cup of coffee, so to speak. And last night, I was, I was surprised. Because I wouldn't say that like, oh my gosh, it's the most fun ever. This is blue. No, it wasn't the most fun ever. I wouldn't choose to play that game every day like some people who really enjoyed it. I know that my buddy Chase, huge fan of the uh, of that game. I think he said he played that game to death when it came out. Um, but me, I I think what it was more for me was a like kind of a a full circle in my gaming life. Just like, dude, I used to watch my buddy play this because I was not able to purchase this game myself. And here I am not only purchasing the remastered version of this game, but purchasing it and not playing it. And so it was like this weird like feeling of like, man, times have changed and how crazy is it that I get to do this. And so while I was playing the game, you know, that thought aside, I, I, I was impressed by the way it looked. Like I, the Nintendo Switch is, an impressive machine, not because graphics-wise it's able to do things that other... No. Because it's pretty underwhelming when you break it down. The processing power, all of this stuff that exists within this machine is very underwhelming. And to know or to, to see what it's able to do... And honestly, it's really what the companies do to make the games look good is awesome. I, I think that when playing that game, it was just that, that realization or that, um, that understanding that, dude, these games look good because the developer, whoever it may be, I'm not going to pretend to know what the process looks like. I don't know the process. The only process I know is what I'm doing right here. I, I know this very well. I can recite it a hundred times over. And the process of this... <laughs> Roast the beans, grind the beans, soak the beans, extract the beans, good to go. Um, I don't know why I said that. But with the this game, the way it looked, I was like, man, it's running smooth. It's at a higher frame rate compared to something like Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. It's at 60 frames per second for those of you who care. It's not a full-priced game, which is cool. It is a remaster, so, you know, good on them for making it a little bit more consumer friendly when it comes to how much it costs. But the game itself wasn't as much of a Metroidvania stereotypical game like Dread was, right? Dread, Metroid Dread was my first Metroid game. And I didn't love the game. Uh, it's, again, not my genre. I know it looked beautiful and a lot of people are really, really into... Uh, the Metroid style games, um, but for me, nothing crazy. Um, but what really took me to the next level, so to speak, when it came to, where's my dump cup? Right there. When it came to this was my experience with this. This is the uh, Nixie or Nixie, NYXI, so say that however you think, um, wizard. They sent this to me to review. 
And I was like, well, I got to try it out in its natural habitat, right? In a GameCube game. And so I did. Uh, I think that it's chunky. It, it definitely is. It's a lot chunkier than the other one, which is this, the Doyoki, which is really just Binbok. Um, this also, dude, like, come on. Like, have it one color at least, right? But it's chunkier than this. And there's differences between the two that make one, I feel like, better than the other. Uh, there's an objective better one, and then there is a subjective better one, right? And so I'll tell you real quick. And also, I just want to say this. I have signed up for the affiliate program for both of these. But, and this might be a dumb thing to do. I'm not, you know, <laughs> because I can make a couple bucks. I'm not going to link them. If you want to go get them, you can go look for them. I don't want moving forward to be, it's again, this is like against every business decision that anyone ever says. I don't want moving forward products that I talk about for you to feel like I'm just talking about them because I want you to buy them. I don't really care uh, that much. There are things that I like, right? Um, and I'm a huge fan of, and I would say go out and figure that out. But I would much rather the support that exists through, you know, just watching, not buying. In coffee stuff, I will link because I feel like that's something that is, doesn't feel like I'm pushing it on you. I don't want you to feel that about this at all. But let me, that being said, let's go over um, the, the differences between the two because there certainly is. Um, this guy, when you put it to, against the, the Doyoki, when you connect this to your switch, this uh, is flat. It, it actually is you know the same width of your switch. When you connect these guys, the Anixi, Anixi, these, the wizards, there is a fat, chunky section here. Dude, that's crazy, right? That's gross. I don't like that. Now, when you hold it as a uniform controller, it's looking a little better. But, dude, it doesn't look good. Now, are you going to be that jack wagon walking around with GameCube style controllers on your Nintendo Switch at your local, local coffee shop? If you are, hey, jur like, jury's out on you. Who knows? You can have the chunkiest of chunky because no matter how you slice it, that looks crazy. I, dude, okay, you know what? I, I'm going to grab my Switch to show you. Okay, now that we're here, I can show you the difference between the two and how it looks. So let's start with the uh, the Nixie and how that... Hold on, let me, get, let me get all this taken care of real quick. Let me get my cup. I don't want to... Like, this is real walnut. And so I don't want that to get all messed up. Okay, so, right, switch. We take these off, like so. I have these on because I was shooting B-roll for something uh, for my review of the uh, Wonder, my Wonder. So let's start with the, um, the Doyoki. And the Doyoki is actually, both these come with extra parts, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, so for the Doyoki, it has this little slider, right? So if you want to charge both of these, you can, you can, uh, rail charge them, which is possible, or there is a USB-C in here, so you can USB-C charge them if you want, uh, you know, your call. But you slide these suckers on, and if you look, it's flush, right? Looks good, <laughs> but it's, this doesn't. I mean, so it looks kind of cool, but like, if you're that guy, you're that guy sitting or just outside in, in line at the bank, and you're like, I'm not gonna say it, we don't have to. That's crazy, that's crazy. Okay, I said it, that's crazy. I don't recommend that. Now with the, the, the Doyoki or Binbok or whatever, comes with are these guys, little thumbsticks. So you have, um, you got three of each. So you have the ones that are on there now, which are, they're like, they're just normal height and they have the little circle texture on them. And then you have raised ones that have no texture on the top, which is one ring. And then you have the little knobs. 
that you would expect, right, for the the uh, the yellow part, because that's what it was back in the day, the GameCube. But it also comes for the green, the gray one, which is great. They give you everything. Cool, right? Awesome. Um, that's the Doyoki. Oh, this doesn't have Hall effects uh, thumbsticks, just so you know. Uh, and yeah, apparently the thumbsticks are good. There is Rumble. Um, I don't. Rem there is Gyro. I don't remember about NFC. I don't think there is, but you know. None of these have that. And the triggers are fine, right? This is cool. I didn't pay for this. I wouldn't pay for this, personally. I wouldn't pay for any of this. This is a ridiculous accessory that I don't really find necessary. But hey, we're still gonna talk about it because they're, I mean, they're interesting, nonetheless. So let's go over to the Nixies. Because these guys, I feel like the, this is the better of the two in most ways. And then there's just one fatal flaw that I'm not the biggest fan of personally, but whatever, we'll talk about that. Um, you have the rings. You can switch out your thumbstick rings to the hexagonal kind, uh, which were you, if you're a GameCube fan, um, the right stick, that little C stick had this directional to uh, basically emulate that because uh, you had the up, down, left, right that existed originally with the uh, the N64. So you had these that had the Cs. So basically by making a thumbstick, it was full all of it, but then it matched that of the thumbstick here, which had locked points for that. And so um, it allowed you to still get up, down, left, right for the, thumb, for the C stick because there was places for it to land versus the left stick, which is smooth. And so all you do to switch these out is there's a little lock ring and you rotate it. And then you just, I don't love this part. This feels a little jank, but you just pull it off. And then you have the exposed thumbstick, which is, uh, these are hall sensing, or hall sensor or whatever they're called. Um, it doesn't ship with any thumbsticks additional, but it seems like this part is easily replaceable if you can find it. I don't know where to look. But hey, whatever. Uh, put it back on, you just slide it back on in the orientation because it is like a little rectangle so that you can't just put it on any way you want, which is good, that helps. And you slide this back on, you can put the circular one, which I did swap out. It originally ships with both having the hexagonal kind. And then so you just put that back on and then you snap it into place. And again, there's a little ring with like little dots that you line up and so it'll click. I made that click sound to over over exaggerate the click noise, and then it's locked in. So that's that's the controller part of swapping the thumbsticks. Now what the the thing that I don't love is the chunkiness. Uh, let's talk about charging first. Charging, you have uh, each individual. There's two ways to charge charge on on system right rail charging, or each. Each Joy-Con, if that's what you want to call these, individual ones, can be charged through USB-C, via USB-C, however you're supposed to say that if you're smart. This, I prefer the way they do this. You don't individually, here, you don't individually charge this, you just have the, the, the whatever rail thing, and then you charge that, and then it charges the whole thing. Um, but this, that means that you technically have to have two cables don't love that. Now, let's hook it up. I have, okay, the hair's gone. Slide this on. There, there's, there's like these little ribs on here. I don't love that. Cause it feels like whatever, it's plastic on metal. So it's not gonna technically scratch it. Locked into place. We're locked in. Now that though, dude. Gross, right? That doesn't look good. I don't, I don't like it. Like th they achieve, they have the same stuff inside. I don't know if there's needed extra needed space for the, the Hall effect thing. Is that why? I don't know, dude. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not certain. Um, the the ergonomics are fine. I I feel like the way that the the whole thing does this stand up on its own? No. Okay. No. So this. Leans forward. Can you use the kickstand? No. Kickstand is 
only usable to there. But then why? <laughs> why would you use the kickstand? I don't know. Um, now, there's, there's a lot of redeeming factors that this thing has. Aside from how it looks back here, up front, same as the other one, ridiculous. But this has one thing that I think sets it apart is these right here. You hear that? It's like a mouse click. I, that's the trigger. That's ZL. It's so, oh, it's so nice. It's almost like a, a mechanical keyboard kind of feel. Dude, that feels so good. I'm, I love that. And so when I was playing yesterday, I was, I was uh, playing Prime and it was, there's a bunch of whatever bugs to kill. It's like, tick, 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 tick. it just, it felt cool. It felt cool. Uh, D-pads too, they don't, not, uh, the buttons on this system don't have the same feel as that mouse click trigger that the shoulder buttons have, but or sorry, they don't have the same sound, but they do have the same feel, or at least that's what I feel like it is. Um, the back buttons though, these little these little things here, these guys, perfectly placed. You're like, they're raised a little bit, perfectly placed. This, I don't know what the, why they decided to do it the way they did, but they made it flush. And so it's textured, there's little you know, bumps on it, so you know where it is, but it's flush. So when you're playing, right? So if we, if we have, let's let's take this off the system. I don't like how this looks, so it's driving me insane. Um, so switch, you're over there, and then we'll put it back on so I can show you how this works. So if you're holding this one, natural, right? Everything's good. The whole, your fingers are naturally on. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Fine. Look, see, I'm I'm clicking them very comfortable. Right, super good. Binbach, not Binbach, uh, Nixie. I'm going where I want them is down here in order for me to actually actuate them. Instead of using the middle pad of my middle finger, I have to, I'm playing, holding, bring my fingers up. That is so unbelievably nitpicky, JD. Why? That's ridiculous. You sound like a needy little baby. And you know what? It might not be important to people. But for me, if I'm gonna utilize something such as the very back button, which is supposed to increase the whatever, I don't even, make it easier for you to, oh, sad day, ooh, that's a little full. <laughs> it's supposed to you know, grant you access to extra macro, whatever you wanna say. It should be easier to use, right? Am I crazy for saying that? I don't think so. I think that it's perfectly acceptable to say that where the placement of the buttons are on the back of this seems like they missed the mark. Now looking at this from the back, doesn't it kind of look like the guy from Skyrim? <laughs> right? That kind of does. But when it, when it came to, now let's go back to Metroid Prime, okay? Look at this, it looks good. It's not centered, awesome. When it came to my experience last night playing Metroid Prime Remaster. Hold on, let me do this quickly. Mm. And playing the game with these controllers, I really did feel the immersion more. I tried it this morning, which is the Pro Controller. It, d dude, I'm talking. Dude, I'm talking like the difference is marginal. But, but if we're gonna at least humor the conversation, I will say that playing the game on something such as this, with the feel of it and the way, felt good. Now, that's ridiculous to say, <laughs> now that I think of it, because I never played the game on the original controllers. I never did. The nostalgia's not there. There's nothing. There's no physical nostalgia. There's no actual feeling of like, oh man, this feels just like. So the whole 
point I'm trying to make about, dude, the GameCube controller makes it feel better, I realized 25 minutes in, wherever this is, is ridiculous. There's no point for me to say that at all because it's, I never played it. Oh, gosh. My caffeine's kicking in and I'm going crazy. That's super funny, actually, come to think of it. But when it came to my experience with Metroid Prime, playing it with whatever controller, who cares, right? Who cares? I, I would say that the game itself, uh, these... Hey, I'm sorry, right, I have, to, I have to apologize to these two companies real quick. I'm not going to recommend them. They're great products. This one over this one, right? Easy peasy. Go out and buy it. Dude, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that it's necessary, right? The, unless, unless this is what you want. If this is what you want, go ahead. But you're not. I'm just going to hit, hit the nail on the head for you. Metroid Prime Remaster. Sure, you're going to play that game originally. If you're like a hardcore Super Smash Brothers fan and like you need to play it on a GameCube controller, I would say... You know, sure, do that as well. But do you need to go out and buy either of these? Absolutely not. And and for me, the reason I say that is because, dude, I think this is my favorite color combo, if I'm being honest with you. But This is so good looking, as is. I know that, like, physically, this is not the best feeling, and that's why I am much more of a fan of something like the Satisfied Grips for long play. Um, but... Honestly, when I look at this, dude, when I see this on a desk, when I see this, all I want to do is just pick it up and play it. That, like right now, I'm going to do that once I finish my cup of coffee and we're done hanging out. Like this like screams, pick me up and play me. Whereas like attaching all these different things to it, it, it robs me of that and I, I don't find myself like overwhelmed with the urge of like, I want to play my Nintendo Switch because it has a GameCube controller attached to it, right? Like, I, I feel like, and I want to I make sure I say it properly. I feel like these are very extra, but out of all of the different Joy-Con replacements I've used, okay... They're both very well built. I am so disappointed in the way that this middle rail is. Nixie gets the win. Doesn't mean that the Doyoki's bad, but Nixie gets the win from me. I think that this is the better of the two. As far as Metroid Prime is concerned with that game, that game is worth the purchase. This is coming from someone who is not a Metroid fan. I don't care about the lore. I... Samus, who... I don't care. The... The game is good. It's in in honestly it plays I think that the fact that it runs as well as it does on the Switch is great. The way that they took care of the textures, the way that they took care of the mechanics, the way that they really tried to lock in that 60 frames per second to give you that experience cuz I feel like that's why Skyward Sword felt so good, which we will eventually talk about. I should play that game too. Um Skyward Sword looks so good because of that frame rate, right? The textures were awesome, but it was nothing... Sure, they smoothed some stuff out and made it look a little, a little bit better, but the game itself, that lock, that 60 frames per second is really what makes the game feel so awesome. And I'd say that same thing for Tears of the Kingdom or Breath of the Wild. Like, if they were able to hold on to that 60 frames per second on this, holy cow, dude. Imagine, dude. Imagine. Sit with me right now for a second. Bro, Sit, you sitting? Imagine if you booted up handheld. Oh, dude, I'm just thinking about it now. You booted up Tears of the Kingdom and you're playing at 60 locked, dude? Oh, dude, I, I'd be so amped on that. Does 30 matter? I mean, not really. Breath of the Wild, I loved every minute of that game, and it was like 30 at, at, on its best day. You go into the Korok Forest, and you're lucky to get 10, right? Korok, Lost Woods, sorry. Um, and, I, dude, I didn't get back into talk. See, this is what happens. I mean, I'm glad that I've kind of taken a step back when it came to, like, making videos about stuff, and we're just going to be drinking coffee, talking about video games for a little bit. It allows me to get back into the, you know, playing of the video games, but, like, yeah, the, 
the Metroid Prime experience last night was was cool. The game's not for me. I'm, I'm not. I'm probably not going to be playing it over and over again. I might stream another one of it. Um, I should probably finish it. It's only a dozen hours, so it might be worth that to say that you know, put it on my finished, in my finished cut, you know, category. But I, oh gosh, I uh, I was impressed by it for forty bucks, right? I think it's a forty dollar game. I say it's worth the worth the pickup. I mean, the game costs less than these controllers, if that means anything to you. And so, I mean, if you're going to pick up one of the two, you might as well pick up the game versus these these Joy-Cons or whatever they're called, thumbstick things. <laughs> well, we're done. So, thanks for hanging out, guys. I'll see you guys in the, the next one. Enjoy your coffee today. Happy gaming.